Welcome to this week's GUI and in web browsers weekly call. Uh, it's 16th of October 2019. Um, and we have an agenda. Let me share screen because the first one on agenda is uh, in my demo. So uh, we got the trick, we got hack. Uh, Feel free to add items to agenda. I'll make a quick demo. So uh, last week I mentioned we started working on pre-cached web UI, making it available in offline mode. And it's uh, nearly ready for merging. It will soon land in the beta and release channels. And uh, specifically, you will be able to use this uh, in embedded J with uh, embedded JSAPFS in Brave. So uh, if anyone is interested in uh, interested in details, how this work, uh, details are here. Um, long story short, uh, you are now able to, I'll, maybe I'll, say that I am now loading a build of IPFS companion with this patch. So this is IPFS companion connected to my local node. However, that's go IPFS. That's not what I want. Uh, you can see here it's connected to go IPFS. What I want instead is uh, to use embedded one. So I switched to embedded one. It takes uh, a moment to start for the very first time, uh, but you can see it automatically found, uh, found a port for gateway and API. It discovered my local Go IPFS and it started importing web UI. Uh, what's that? What? It's really supposed to work? Yeah, it works. <laughs> That's cool. So what's happening right now is uh, the first time uh, embedded JS APFS started, it uh, got, uh, the, it checked if uh, web UI is in local repo it was not, so it decided to add it to local cache from an archive which was bundled with IPFS companion itself. So uh, that may run for some time in the background. Uh, however, the thing is now when I go to uh, web UI here, it should open much faster, uh, mainly because it's already in local repo. So you can see it's, it's probably slow because this laptop is very slow and I'm running like screen recording and all the stuff and also like full Go IPFS, so it's barely uh, working. However, it's super fast if you run it on local, uh, like regular machine uh, and all that like the files and things uh, are now on par with Go IPFS. So that's uh, good for Brave because uh, we run everything, both JSAPFS, Embedded HTTP Gateway, and IPFS Companion in the same, basically in the same uh, page, background web extension page. Uh, so removing the need for fetching entire web UI from the, the swarm makes it uh, much more performant uh, on the first run. But what's really cool is that it makes web UI available in offline environments. So as long as you've got IPFS companion installed, uh, you can play, you can add files uh, to your local nodes using web UI, this interface, uh, even if it's uh, offline, even if it's not connected to upstream internet. Um, so that's a short update. It will probably, it will ship soon to both Chromium and Brave in like following weeks. Um, and we will be working to 
towards like uh, making sure uh, the web UI is also available on Firefox, but there are technical details uh, listed on the issue. Um, any questions? That's awesome. Nice work. Uh, so this helps with two things. It helps initial load and it allows web UI to work offline at, at any point. Okay. Yep, correct. And also uh, if you, your local node immediately starts providing web UI to other peers on the network, right? Because you get that for free in IPFS. Um, yep. Uh, Yep, that's uh, that's it from me. I will, the next one on the agenda is IPFS Geo IP, uh, the update of data set, I believe. Hack, it's yours. Yes, it is. I probably I'm going to share my screen, even the ooh. Just one second. Currently, I have to give Zoom permissions. Okay, I can I can share it because I would need to to change permissions. I would need to quit this, but no problem. So, uh, Lidl noticed that GYP is a uh, data set is quite old, and I don't mind updating it. I'm just trying to understand everything that's happening with it. Uh, Kubuksu, I don't know. Yep. Uh, he said probably you could use directory sharding. I'd like just to know what that means in this context. I'm trying to understand that. I've been searching a bit, but. Uh, that's a good question. So basically uh, sharding uh, is a feature of IPFS when you have a very big directory. Yeah. And when you're building DAG, you don't want to build a very huge like level. You want to like shard it and we I believe we we got something called HAMT shards and that type of sharding is I, I believe we are basically uh, cutting this huge flat directory each thousand items and making that a separate branch uh, and that branch is uh, abstracted away uh, on some APIs so when you are traversing the DAG uh, like high level APIs which operate on directories do not see this additional layer of indirection. It just traverses it directly. And the main example and use of sharding right now is Wikipedia because everything in Wikipedia, entire thing is under slash wiki directory. Yeah. So that directory is, is sharded. I believe uh, sharding is implemented in Go IPFS and I and also like in JS APFS because we are able to load Wikipedia using oh, JS JS APFS uh, in Brave. So th the question is, I'm not sure if the data set is that big, like the data set for uh, for Geo IP. Yeah, I don't think it is. Uh, I downloaded the CSVs and yeah. basically the I in total. It's, it can be, it can reach like 250 megabytes, perhaps. Oh, then I It's bigger than, than the, the one we had before, which was only 60 mm -hmm. something megabytes. Oh yeah, then it's probably, probably not worth it. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe uh, Kubuksu meant uh, sort of like a shard, sharding on a more practical level. So making sure when we like represent this data set on IPFS, represent it in a way when I want to make a uh, like Geo IP lookup for a specific uh, like IP range or something, uh, I only request this small branch and none of those like hops on the tree is too big. But I don't think it, it's, it, it's a problem. Uh, I, I would just try to replicate like update it uh, using the old okay. scheme uh, and worry about sharding if we like hit some performance issues i'll try to because the new the new gui uh, geolite 
-hmm. is a little bit different on their structure. But I'll try to update it. Oh, yeah. Update it. Just it me be... mention me, me on uh, on issue if you got like uh, okay. specific uh, questions because I feel yeah it's it's possible that we will need to basically redo the way we represent this data set on IPFS. Uh, we the problem is like we don't want to like fetch too much uh, when user yeah. is going to uh, to the peers screen, um, and we want while we do this we pro we should like include ipv6 uh, yeah i agree yeah uh, all right uh so update on that <laughs> soon uh cool uh testing matrix yeah i i added that now now that uh we're so Brave is P0 for the quarter for, for browser land. And we have P2 for this testing matrix, but the more that uh, we're listening to the core implementations uh, space, the more important this type of coverage I think is going to become. Uh, Go IPFS wants to cut a release later this quarter, and that's gonna be, sounds like a, a, a challenge. There's a lot of work to do there. So the more that we can get out in front of where they're at and understand if the changes that they're making are either you know, breaking uh, desktop or companion or web UI, uh, the more we'll be able to help them by notifying them sooner about any issues that we might find. So I think that really bumps up the, the importance of this. And um, given that we, we are, I'm I'm at the point. Given it is the end of the year, I'm starting to count weeks. I'm like we have we have now less than ten weeks before the end of the quarter, <laughs> which is the end of the year. Which means if the sooner that we can get some of these basic uh, tests up in front of, be able to have like latest latest desktop or latest companion or latest web UI running against latest Go IPFS, even on a even if it was a, every few days or something like that, so we could know when they're landing things as soon as we can let them know that things break better i've been uh, sort of looking at uh, while working on on a separate uh, thing i was looking at how at the test external command in azure it was added recently which is utilized by jsapfs to uh, basically uh, run tests of external project uh, against new patched version of jsapfs and see if those uh, if the build of external project breaks when you swap JSAPFS, uh, uh, swap the release version they are using with the latest one. Uh, so uh, that's something I've been uh, le learning this week uh, for like a test companion, but I believe next week we probably could uh, start uh, doing something in this column. Uh, I mean, it's probably the first thing we would try is to set it up uh, with JSIPFS. Uh, the thing is, JSIPFS right now is not supported by Web UI, so it's like tricky, tri tricky place. Um, uh, the command itself is uh, like JS centric, so I need to like understand it and see if we should either extend that and that's add support for like go somehow or create something similar but being like language agnostic um, so i think we will probably uh, get this uh, off the ground next week i'll try to allocate some time uh, being hack what are our concerns because uh, like uh, regarding like JSAPFS support, is it something we, I don't think it's like a priority. It's like nice to have right now, right? I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, no, like realistically this quarter, uh, if we are about to ship those tests, yeah. we'll probably ship those tests before we ship support for JSAPFS, right? Yes, I think so. At least yeah. on the stop, I'm not thinking about adding support for just uh, uh, right now there yeah, are other yes. things to do before yeah so it's like 
uh, usually I would like ignore JS API files. <laughs> However, we really need those tests for Brave. So it's not like, we, I, I don't feel we can cut corners here. We, we probably need to like deliver both this quarter. Uh, there's no way around this. Is there, is there an issue tracking JS IPFS support? And how do we know how far away we are? Oh, it's like, uh, just to clarify, uh, the JS IPFS support in uh, IPFS desktop, it's here. Yes. Like, it's not a problem to support. It's really easy to add that support. You just need to bundle JS IPFS on IPFS desktop, and it should work. But we have to let users speak between the IPFS and JS IPFS, explain them the differences, why they would choose one over the other. And that might be the most difficult part. Yeah. I, I would recommend doing that, but maybe just having one not enabled and not allowing that choice yet. Like do the bundling, but not provide any UI or any explainers. Yeah, like command line, add command line parameter just to have like tests in place. Like uh, we... on the configuration file, there's already an option that says the type is go. We just need to change the option and bundle just IPFS. It was working like that before. I just removed it when we revamped this desktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that, that's a probably a good plan just to add support, but don't expose it to user in okay. any way. Um, so, because then IPFS desktop would be here and like uh, I, uh, JS IPFS in Brave uh, would be here. So like that, that rem Firefox remains, but if we have this working, we probably have this as well. Uh, yep, so I, I, I feel we probably uh, re uh, have either a call or I'll open a PR with uh, something along those ways. I need to like uh, see how to accommodate both Go and JS. Um, I agree, like th that would be probably my, my uh, at least my, my next priority uh, to figure it out. Because uh, we really need those tests. Uh, otherwise we will be like stopping everything and trying to fix. Uh, regressions and yeah, what, yeah. What I really want to avoid too is is late is letting go IPFS know later about problems that the bugs that they might have shipped as well. Yep. So we are are the fact that that Web UI exercises and desktop and companion exercise all these APIs allows us to be an early warning system for problems that they might not have caught in their tests. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I mean, we have his, history has shown that we do discover those issues. Oh yeah, yeah. And like uh, those uh, like early adopters tests in JS APFS work. I smoke test tested them this week. Alex paid me a visit and asked why did you break things. So it's very good. Someone is looking at those. The system works. The system works. You just need to, like add more to it. Um, cool. Um, I guess that's the status. Uh, we will try to like kick it off within like one week, like the next week. Uh, at least, uh, at least to do any initial research, what's needed to support both. Are we able to use Azure or we need to like create something custom? Um, cool. Wikipedia. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I added this. There's um, the the Wikipedia anniversary is coming up. Their big one is coming up in January, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so kind of like talking about ideas and the fact that we've been talking a little bit about Wikipedia stuff recently, as well, kind of sets us up to do some fun things. Uh, hack projects at Lab Week. Uh, you know, Wikipedia Fridays or something that Lytle and I were just talking about. Um, or, and, and maybe even, you know, in terms of like kind of like broader support, uh, ongoing monthly short call of all the related parties. So people not even IPFS related necessarily, but that are interested in doing this work, like the OpenZoom folks and the people doing the snapshots. But we'd lo we'll love your ideas about fun things that we could do. Uh, any, any things that we could use Wikipedia as a forcing function to fix stuff that we know we've wanted to fix for a long time, anything to support that use case.
that kind of the conversations we have about co-hosting also kind of support this idea of like really low barrier to entry for regular users to be able to use things like companion to better support Wikipedia by by their own browsing and serving. Yeah, I, I honestly believe that we sort of are approaching the point when we either need uh, that like the idea of Wikipedia Fridays or uh, something like recurring call. Uh, it could be like initially like internal to people across uh, projects that are passionate about this. Uh, but it could uh, at some point like invite uh, people who are responsible for making those Zoom snapshots and other things. Because um, there, like, uh, there are discussions internal to IPFS, how to handle some things. For example, uh, co-hosting spec, which is like MFS based, you like regular IPFS node is all you need. And there's also like more professional, uh, solution when you have like a collaborative IPFS cluster where people like contribute their own cluster nodes, but that like there's like a higher threshold of when you can contribute. Uh, so all those discussions need to happen some, somewhere. And ideally we would, uh, I think like we'll start thinking uh, in Wikipedia Fridays. I'll try to allocate some time each Friday and first step would be to think, how often do we want to meet? Who, want to, who do, we want, do we want to invite? Uh, like make, clean up the house, like uh, those scripts need to be like honestly uh, refreshed, polished or, or just plainly re rewritten. Uh, but I'm really uh, confident that uh, the more we talk about this and people see there's like actual movement, uh, we are able to deliver like actual value because not only make sure like the current version of distributed Wikipedia is kept up, up, uh, up to date, but we can demonstrate things uh, like the strengths of IPFS. Just like I said, like from DNS link, IPNS, sharding, uh, handling huge data sets, uh, unpacked Wikipedia is 650 gigabytes in size. So that's, also is a great playground for uh, experimenting with UX. I want to sh contribute, but I don't have 600 gigabytes of space. Or how do you like present UX to a user? I had that discussion with, uh, with Michelle uh, last week. How do you like even present to a user who wants to contribute to Wikipedia? You don't want to like show pin Wikipedia because that's impossible. You don't have that much space and things like that. So it's like entire like Wikipedia topic is great, like battleground for uh, ac across, uh, across IPFS ecosystem. And I feel uh, it's a very good story uh, to tell and to, and makes people excited to work on. Um, Wikipedia Fridays. Uh, do we, so you, some of this work has already been, is already in the distributed Wikipedia, uh, repo. Um, but if, uh, is there any one place that is there, is that the place where we should be keeping these topics? Like if we have ideas, if, if we have needs, honestly, yeah, like honestly, there one, I see if there's one overarching strategy issue that we should be using to list all the things that we think we want to do might be related. Where's that place? Uh, I feel like for discoverability and just working in open, we probably should just create issues in the distributed Wikipedia project. Uh, I, like some time ago, I made a first pass and closed and commented on super old issues, but we probably need to do another pass uh, and merge close remaining issues. Uh, however, like that's, that's the repo, I feel. Uh, people are like uh, watching it, uh, and we probably should not introduce anything new. Can you link that in the notes? So that yeah, we could also like things, if we decide to make a community meeting, uh, we would just like drop issue there with like all the links, um, just to like reuse the momentum of the repo. It was sort of like covered with spider webs, but it's, it's getting better. That sounds great.
Who? Uh, co-hosting? Co-hosting. I threw it in there. We, we know we want to talk about it. Uh, I, have a, I have an idea, not an idea, a question about co-hosting, Wikipedia related things. Yep. Mm. What if someone lazily co-hosts Wikipedia and then they, they have the idea of deleting some pages because it's occupying too much space? Right now you only had the idea of removing snapshots, but not pages. I don't know. It was just an idea, just a question I had. It's quite simple. We just need to go to the snapshot and delete the page, probably. But I don't know. Uh, uh, like on the technical side, mm. it's fine. It, like you could yeah. go inside the snapshot. You could remove any like subdirectory or or specific page. Uh, it would no longer be like the real snapshot, uh, but the next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, then uh, when the when the next one is created, that one would be correct again. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, so it's sort okay. of like self self healing, especially in a lazy mode. Uh, some so kind of related thing is uh, a topic of removal of things from MFS. So mm. I, I believe we, we have a, an issue uh, discussing UX of that somewhere, but uh, the, the background on that problem is that MFS is like a high level abstraction to reason and organize IPFS resources. Um, if you remove something from MFS, it's still cached in your local repo until mm. those blocks are either manually removed or garbage collected. So when you remove something from MFS, it's no longer implicitly pinged, but it's still in the cache. Uh, and there was like a question, should we either remove, when someone removes something from MFS, should we just always remove the, explicitly remove those blocks or should we give a user, a user an option uh, to like remove this and Purge from local cache or something like this, and it's like a UX question. Um, would users even care, or would users know what that means? Uh, the the main problem is uh, people add like huge video to MFS. It takes like one gigabyte of space, and then they remove it from MFS, and the repo size is still one gigabyte. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's uh, that that's the UX problem. Um, it's an Can't open we problem. tell the, rep the IPFS to remove the blocks if they're not pinned or something like that? Yeah. Because so that's, if we garbage collect, we are removing every removing everything that it's not pinned, and maybe it might not be desirable. Yeah, that, that's the that's the the question. Should we like re remove it explicitly? or give user an option yeah. uh, which is disabled by default uh, right now the current situation is that nothing is removed it's in the cache and it, it, it will get removed when garbage collection kick, kicks in but that may happen like next week or next month depending of the repo size mm -hmm. and the thresholds yeah um, yep uh, around like generic co-hosting, I believe um, there are some challenges uh, on the UX side and uh, on the UX side of lazy co-hosting. So uh, basically IPFS companion would be an entry point for uh, co-hosting Wikipedia in a lazy way. And there's an issue we probably will link it to uh, in the notes uh, later, but uh, in, in the dish issue we discussed uh, lazy co-hosting versus uh, full co-hosting. And uh, the challenge is how to communicate to user the difference, the difference. which one, uh, as, as just specifically in IPFS compliant, because that would be the entry point. Uh, 
when you click, when you are on a distributed Wikipedia and you want to co-host this, should we just like co-host it lazily and that's it? Or should there be an option to make a full snapshot? Or if, if, like if so, how to account for a situation when user has a repo limit 10 gigabytes and they want to co-host 600 gigabytes? Mm. Um, we, we've been like discussing things like uh, checking those limits and either enabling uh, full co-hosting only if you have the space. Um, so it, it's mostly UX challenge, I believe, because uh, on the technical side, we, we basically use existing uh, MFS APIs and we would just run it uh, periodically uh, to, to, to check snapshots. Um, do you see like any other like open questions around like lazy co-hosting? Mm. Yeah, no. I need to like gra grab Eric, I think, and uh, Eric and yeah. Michelle and uh, figure out the UX side of this. But I don't yeah. think it's like blocking uh, us from updating IPFS uh, co-host as a library. I think that that's more, more or less unlocked. Uh, um, yeah, there's also the, the PR with the spec changes. I, oh, I, yeah. I haven't changed the hosting SH script yet. Mm -hmm. did, we mer like, did we merge the spec updates? Did no, or, or? I was waiting to update the script. I think like, <laughs> no, I think like we should like merge spec. Uh, okay, merge. we'll do yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Let's merge spec and just continue with the implementation. Because uh, uh, the UX challenges are sort of like on, on companion site and I'll probably be the RI for that to figure it out. Uh, I need to change the UX or around pinning in the com in companion in general. Uh, there is, uh, maybe let me quickly show. What, what, one recommendation that, that I'd like to throw out there for for the UX standpoint is to actually separate these use cases from companion altogether. Um, we talked in, in Lisbon way back about what it looks like to maybe ship things that users understand who aren't familiar with IPFS. Mm -hmm. So if you had a, a browser extension that maybe was like companion in the plumbing in the guts, <laughs> but was called Wikipedia helper when you install mm -hmm. it, then you get a lot of these UX questions that can be centered around what the users actually want to do, which is, I'm on Wikipedia, I want to, I want to share this page with other people. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to learn about IPFS at all necessarily, but it's using IPFS and maybe there's some branding of IPFS to let them know, I am serving this, I am doing this on the public network. But it, from a UX standpoint, a lot of these kind of problems of how do we fit it into a world that is IPFS centric, goes away and as a designer, you have the ability to say, this user wants to share, this user wants to save, this user wants to read, this user wants to publish. Again, these primary use cases and it really clarifies what we're able to do from a, from a design standpoint. Uh, Maybe even has, has, has an admin interface that just opens up web UI oh, <laughs> for people yeah. that want to dig deeper, right? But I would encourage I would encourage us to when we're thinking about this, think about it from the from the point of view of the user who is I'm just a person who likes Wikipedia and I want to help, yep. Or I need to use Wikipedia and I cannot in my country, yep. And not think about it from a like like let's just pretend all existing UI does does not exist when when trying to come at this from a design standpoint. Like yep. the set of use cases that I wrote up in the spec bug. All it's, the design f should flow from those sets of use cases, not from the companion we have today. It's highly, highly related to the work made by Michelle. She's sort of like doing a state of the union uh, <laughs> of uh, pinning in general, like pinning, not in a technical sense of pinning API we have right now, but like making sure the stuff you care about stays around or like contributing your resources to keeping that stuff around. 
uh, and it's like uh, she, she's gathering notes and other stuff. And this uh, scenario when someone wants to contribute uh, contribute to bandwidth and storage for to Wikipedia is one of those. Maybe like not entry point. Uh, IPFS companion is entry point for that use case right now. However, like that user story is a separate thing, uh, which we 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 discuss internally, and. Uh, I agree that, that it should be like discussed, detached from existing uh, interfaces. Because like right now, Companion is just a vessel for shipping those integrations. At some point, uh, web browsers would uh, figure it out their own way. Companion is just like a template to how this uh, could work. Uh, can just can like, you drop the link to that just in the news? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll add it shortly uh, there's also like a project around language refresh i sort of started gro grouping uh, issues related to that so that's language refresh like specific type ifs companion but i believe uh, like redirects those are like specific to companion but things like uh, pinning and the way we provide entry points to web ui uh, those are more generic uh, IPFS desktop is much better at providing entry points to web UI right now. You get a direct link to a specific screen, like files or uh, peers. Uh, in companion, you got just like uh, one link. Uh, but those are you, mostly UX discussions. And we have this, uh, I'm not sure if, if it was mentioned before, but there's, uh, there are those tags, static redesign which are automatically added to a lot of repos um, in IPFS and IPFS shipyard. Uh, so if you have a, like a question, UX question, um, if you add like design UX uh, tag, it will automatically get added to uh, boards of uh, our design shop. So Eric and others will see it and probably be able to contribute without being like directly uh, mentioned. So that's pretty, pretty useful. Yeah, and like uh, the idea around uh, uh, pinning, the discussion around pinning uh, is ongoing. I wonder if there's any, there are several high profile websites such as Pinterest that have done probably UXR around pinning as both language and uh, UX and interaction design. I wonder if there's any public research that could leverage. I looked in the, the, the Firefox UX because they talked about the idea. There's a couple of different things like pinning stuff on your activity stream and bookmarks and things like that. It had some pin features before, but I couldn't find anything that was, that was public on their research sites. It's all behind uh, login. I dropped, uh, I dropped link to Michelle's notes and I believe there are more notes. I need to find it uh, uh, like generalized user story around MFS. Um, but I'll drop it after this call because I'm really bad at multitasking. All right. Uh, desktop, CPU and GPU usage. Yeah, I just added that someone opened an issue about that. And a, I noticed that too already. A new issue? <laughs> a new are, issue. We are I think there is already one about this, but it's good oh. to review it. Oh, if yeah, we, totally. Can, we, can someone share the screen? So, because I can't right now, I will need to restart the Zoom. I Please. Can, I can try. Just to take a look at that activity monitor. Uh, screenshot. Oh, it yeah. seems the render process is taking too much CPU and GPU, uh, CPU, even though it is closed. It's not closed, it's hidden. I, I had the idea, uh, we, right now we have the window. It, the window exists, but it's hidden. So it is really quick when we just, when we click on files or peers or it just opens. The other option would be to create the window when the user clicks on the, on the option on the menu bar. So we don't have a renderer process on the background consuming CPU usage. Although, uh, if, uh, however, that would, uh, that would make 
the time when we, the times, I'm really confused with my English for now. Uh, it, uh, it would make, uh, it seems slower when I open the web UI afterwards, if, if it wasn't even in the background. I, I sort of wonder, cause like in regular Chrome, when yeah. you have like background tabs, they like some time ago, they started like heavily throttling and basically fr they had a concept of like freezing tabs. Yeah. Like a background tab. So basically if the tab is not the active one, all the like JavaScript, all like uh, timeout, uh, set timeouts and intervals and uh, next, next ticks and all this stuff basically stops. Like event, yeah. loop, event loop stops on, until you unfroze the tab. I wonder if there's a, like a similar concept in Electron or maybe like an API which lets you like explicitly froze and unfroze. I tried to find that. I couldn't. I have a new book, by the way, that Oli recommended me to buy. Oh, man. Let's see if it it's, helps. It it's quite like, new. It looks like a good book. Related. It just arrived today, so related to related to our interests. Yeah, let's see if it helps. I hope it does. But, I, in, yeah. I I initially thought you meant like IPFS companion CPU GPU is high, so I feel totally relieved that it's not another issue but, about <laughs> companion. But I think the main problem is actually IPFS that is taking most more, most of the CPU too. Uh, here you can distinguish what is actually from Electron and what is from yeah. the UIPFS thing. And, and, and you like do, you just have a HTTP client. You don't have embedded JS IPFS yet. Yes, we don't. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so it's just the client. So that, that's a bit easier to reason about. Um, that it, the, that this person even said that when IPFS demon is stopped, then the GPU and CPU usage is really low. As it should, and he's asking if there's any particular reason why the app consumes so much GPU and CPU and the demon is running since the app window is not open, and I don't know what to say. IPFS yeah. consumes energy. <laughs> it's not. It's not mining. <laughs> yeah, it isn't. <laughs> um, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I'll. I'll. I will check and try to reproduce this on Linux. Cause it, it may be interesting in, if it's uh, the same situation across platforms or is it specific to Mac? Uh, Cause there could be something, uh, th there could be something specific to Mac, who knows. Um, right now, like j just to uh, make sure I understand correctly, right now we sort of like keep the page in the background running we just hide it we don't like recreate entire thing each time we open window right yeah that's yeah that's it but i think that since we are using redux bundle or something like that it detects when the page is idle and it is supposed to suspend the activities and re-renders re while it's idle so because yeah. like uh, uh, we are talking just to be clear we are talking about web ui running on electron yeah, web UI running uh, on Electron. And the problem with web, web UI is that it constantly, even if it's like, if it constantly runs at least a request for bandwidth stats. Yeah, if it, yeah. I would like to see if there's a way to check if, well, if, if the window is hidden, if it is requesting anything to the daemon. Because yeah. if, if uh, uh, for example, if someone opens the peers page and then I do in the way it keeps uh, asking for the peers, it yeah. will be a really good situation. Yeah, and, and that's sort of like the problem is that uh, like the way web UI is architectured is it's a web app that like queries uh, our stats API in the background. So on the landing page, uh, you got this graph of like network utilization mm -hmm. over time. The problem with like freezing this uh, process is that we no longer gather uh, data to render this graph and we would have mm -hmm. to sort of like, like, like 
cache it uh, uh, to the IP, IPFS desktop layer. And then when you resume web UI, sort of like populate it for the missing history. So that's like a deeper technical problem, I believe, but I'm not surprised there's like, there, like the GPU uh, thing is probably like re rendering the, this graph. I don't think we are like rendering anything else. It could be useful. On the Pierce page, you're rendering the map and the table. That's true, but like by default, uh, the page that's hidden has this uh, status page, right? Only if that was, it's the last page the user visited. Yeah, so, so may, may, maybe a fix to like solve the GPU thingy is when, when the page goes to the background to switch to like an empty page which, which has no widgets, no nothing. We go to about blank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and when you go open Web UI again, you switch to the, the previous one. Uh, just to make sure the canvas does not get... Yeah, re re I'll see if that improves the usage. If it doesn't, then it's not, that's not the problem. Yeah, but I, honestly, I believe it, it should fix because I saw the similar pro, like utilization problem in Brave. There are like other problems around this like uh, band, bandwidth graph. Uh, but if we are able to uh, to switch just uh, just a, like a blank page with without nothing because I don't think that the HTTP request uh, is responsible for this. It's mostly Canvas, uh, and that's yeah, like drawing li li drawing library. Also, I found some issues on the Pierce page. I know it's it is using too much CPU return because we are re-rendering the map every time uh, there's a change in the Pierce list. And yeah, I'll, I have to take a look at that. I started it already, but. Pierce page is a bit better than it was before. Yeah, uh, it's better, yeah. but it's not perfect. Yeah, but like it, it, you can eyeball it on the Brave. It's much better now because uh, before you could see it's basic, it was basically a chalk point. Uh, all those like delegate, delegated requests for Geo IP things. It was like a huge cascade of requests when you uh, w wanted to open Pierce page. It's a bit better now. Uh, I I think like you should try with this empty page, and if it does not help, uh, maybe ping me again. We'll brainstorm something. Okay, I'll try that out to see mm -hmm. if it works and monitor the activity of Happy. Yeah, um, I have like a similar problem with IPFS Companion. Uh, we are running a lot of unnecessary updates. Uh, I've been sort of slowly addressing it. Uh, we no longer like redraw uh, browser action icon if it's the state does not change and all those tiny things. But the, 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 there's uh, like a bigger rewrite ahead. Ju just like people don't really need to see the peer count in real time, I don't think. They just need to see if IPFS is online or not. Uh, so it's a deeper discussion of trade-off between like be, be providing a lot of that, like view into the state and like the cost of updating the state constantly and how much do we want to show out of the box. Battery first. Battery first, yeah. <laughs> every, every time. I did, uh, I, did, I did ask in the web extensions channel and, and from a Gecko standpoint, there's not really a good way to profile per extension the same way that we profile the core browser engine, but you can use the extension debugger to be able to do like basic profiling the same way that you do for, for web pages. So we can get some view into, into super usage there, but not the kind of uh, very low level yep. view into what's happening. Yeah, but get, like uh, most of uh, yeah, in companion, like most of stuff runs in in a, a single like background page. So you are you basically you see the most of things anyway. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. I believe we are at the end of agenda. Any updates? Team updates? 
hack is busier than expected with you and you also got a book to read i'm reading two books uh, this one is new but i'm reading the permanent record oh, which man. is almost there how is it worth reading yeah i think so at least for me <laughs> Do you have good sleep, sleep after that lecture? Well, lecture is a book or? Yep. I do, <laughs> even though it's not really. Happy <laughs> dreams. Actually, today's dream was not that good. Somehow there was a storm here. It was really oh, man. weird. You know, Hugo was telling me that um, Lisbon does have, because we've been having a lot of earthquakes in San Francisco, and he said that, that, that Lisbon does have earthquakes from now and then, uh, but Porto has no earthquakes ever. Yes, and we are waiting for a really big earthquake, like the one in 1755. Do you know about that one? No. Where almost all Lisbon got destruct, destru destroyed because there was it was a religious holiday and there, there were a lot of candles. That was one of the main reasons of the problems that happened after the earthquake. There was an earthquake, then a tsunami, and then a lot of fires because of the candles. And a lot of Lisbon burned out. And uh, like the Baisha was all built from, was, yeah, it, the parallel streets we have in Baisha, it, it, was, it was all built after that earthquake. Everything that was there was just destroyed. That is, that Hugo mentioned that. He said the layout of the city is yeah. the result of the earthquake repair. Yeah. Oh, man. It's sad. No, no candles. No candles, yeah. No candles. The problem was the candles. Awesome. I've been reading a little of the history of the San Francisco earthquake, and it was kind of the same. Like, most people died from the fire, not from the earthquake. Yeah. You are reading very like <laughs> cheer, cheerful stuff. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I believe we are at the end of this meeting. Let's get back for three minutes uh, of our time. See you same time next week. Goodbye. Bye.